What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk again about the GBD200 series G-Shock watch. And we want to take a look inside the watch. I want to see what kind of battery it uses, how to change the battery, and see how far we can get with dismantling this watch. <laughs> take a look inside the watch and want to see what kind of battery it uses how to change the battery and see how far we can get with dismantling this watch kind of on the g-shock high fashion style uh, i'm not going to go as far in depth and um break it down as far as he does if you're not familiar with g-shock high fashion check out his channel he dismantles G-Shocks for a living pretty much and takes them down to the bare bone and show you what's inside. I'm going to go ahead and um, um, remove the back plate, remove some screws and show you guys some of what's inside. I'm not going to go as uh, detailed as he does, but check out his channel if you haven't done so already. already. Um, I want to check out um, how easy it is to actually change the battery on this puppy though. And um, in case for, I know it's brand new these watches last for ages maybe around i think the life expectancy of these batteries is about three years but in case down the line you decide you do need a battery change check out this video and this might help you um kind of navigate that process so as right, so you can see it's very thin um very small profile design on this watch uh, still got the tag i haven't even used used it but i am intending um to keep it so i'm gonna go ahead and practice on this watch so you guys can enjoy and also use it to your benefit so we have here a screw right there it's a hex screw very small it's not the same size as your mudman gg 1000 i've noticed that it's actually is smaller so don't use the same screw that you that you would use for that so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this screw there all right and um, I bought this tool on Amazon, guys. It's a blessing. Um, it's got a nice indicator here for the charge. Um, switch out. You can switch out the different kind of heads here for the um, uh, your screws. So this one is battery or charge right here. You can charge it at the end. I'm not trying to promote anything, but this thing is a lifesaver. I used to do this manually without these tools. And oh my God, it would take me ages to change the batteries. Now this tool here, I could do it in a wink of an eye. So oops there you go there you go pull that out you can see the screws here it's a nice little fit it's talking there so you can see the screw itself this is what they're using here for that piece to hold the um band um i don't know if, there, if this is actually a quick release on the band so we'll, we'll check that out as well see that there okay um, I don't see your standard GG1000 design on here. Um, they usually have like a little cover there that covers and protects the watch from like moisture and water. Um, helps with the proofing, waterproofing. So they've changed that up. This looks more, uh, it looks different. This is a, a thicker gauge it looks like than the G-Shock Mudman. But let's continue guys. Go ahead and remove the next screw on here. Oops. Okay, this also has a light, by the way, so that's pretty cool. Um, go back in here, take the next screw off. Okay, there we go. And the band came off, so it's not a quick release as I thought. Um, the quick releases are pretty neat, so. Again, like I spoke earlier in my last video about the price of this watch. It's uh, pretty affordable for $150. I think that's why this doesn't have a quick release. Um, I think the quick release does... Let me see how does this go. It does add, the, add to the price itself. So this goes like this here, like that. And there. In that position. And the watch and the band goes inside there. Like so. Like that. So the focus in there a little bit more. This goes in there. That piece goes inside there. So this is all for comfort. Okay, falls right and back in position like that. It's pretty neat, pretty cool. And there like that. And then the band goes in there and the screws 
hold everything together. Um, not a quick release, like I said. All right, remove the other one. Okay. And out it goes and see how easy that comes off. After those four screws come off and there you go. That's the four pieces right there. And you're left with your module and the face. So now I'm gonna remove the back screws, put these pieces to the side. Okay, here's another component here I was talking about. It's a plastic, um, it's kind of plastic, it's not resin, it's not soft, it's not malleable. Um, it's pretty, pretty strong. And you have that centerpiece there that acts as a resistance and acts additional strength to the structure of this component, this little piece. Um, it is transparent though, um, you can see through it right there okay all right then we have these standard screws in the back we'll remove those now switch this switch this head off pull that off the other side because i want to save that for when i reinstall the pieces so there we go switch out my head zoom in Make sure it's on there before I turn it so it doesn't strip it. That's one. That's two. Take those two off, put them to the side, make sure I don't lose them because they are expensive <laughs> to replace. Three. and four all right you can see the back plate comes off pretty easy there you go and you have your standard it's not an o-ring it's got um it is a ring but it's got that nice shape on the edges there to conform to the size of the of the um of the design of the actual module there you go so don't lose that please don't forget to put that back usually it gets attached to here uh, when you remove it don't leave it there and, and attach it, reattach it, because it can get bit by the casing. So you want to take this off and realign it with the actual um, crevice there. It's got a gap around the edge of the module. That's you want to make sure that it's reattach it to that just by placing it in position. Um, inside here, you can see you have that. It looks like that's a, uh, the vibrating part of this. It's also got this little rubber kind of, it looks like possibly a um kind of for shock but this looks like that's the actual vibrating part of the notification so you have this other rubber here part move that um holds that in place there you can see where it goes okay and then you're met with the back pretty simple design method to replace the battery it's not that complicated um looks like a standard little pin there and we'll actually remove it so we could expose the battery and show you guys the kind of battery that it actually uses so go ahead i use a needle uh, right here if you use anything with a point stick it into a little crevice there and you're going to flick it that way like so and boom there you go your um that releases the cover to the battery this sticker um is it shows you how to do an ac reset to the battery but it also sticks to the battery itself so when you pop this when you pop this uh, release there it actually sticks the sticker sticks to the battery and keeps the case from opening so gently pull it like that and there you go guys there's your battery very simple design try to prevent from bending this too much and damaging the cover. So there's a sticker I was talking about. Here's the battery. The CR it uses a CR2032 industrial three volt Panasonic battery. Of course you can use any other battery. I recommend you don't use a generic battery. The longevity of the battery will not last very long. Um, it will be a waste. You have to um, swap out the battery again. If you use a cheap battery, uh, I highly recommend you use a uh, authentic name brand battery. So I'm gonna set the battery to the side and pull the module out carefully. 
All right, I'm using the tweezers right here. I'm gonna pull the module out. Um, I do see uh, what looks like a sensor on the top corner there. So I will be careful not to rip that sensor um, when I pull the module out. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it from over here. Trying to be careful not to I'm gonna close this battery cover here if I can without if you if you ever have the battery cover not closed, just gently re uh, position this cover here. Kind of mold it into back into shape so that it fits back into that position there. Okay, don't force it. There you go. See how closed after I gently um, realigned the shape of it. So here we go. I'm gonna pull. Gently pull this out, and again, I do see a sensor on the top corner there, so I don't want to um, tamper with that and break it. Uh, the sensors are pretty easy to remove and actually easy to reinstall um, with some minor. There you go. So luckily, it's not the sensor is not attached to the body or the module. It's actually attached to the front of the display, which is beautiful because uh, it doesn't affect. Um, having to reconnect there's a uh, like the for example the gwg 1000s in the in the line those watches the sensor is attached to the outside of the body so you have to uh disconnect it and then reattach it so this is beautiful you can see there it's on the bottom there gently or or cleanly very clean design okay uh, this is typical. I've seen this with the standard all the way back to the 5600 G-Shock watch. It's a two-part component. These parts here hold the front of the display and, and um, to the back of the display. The front actually holds just the display itself, the screen, and the back is the actual mechanical module components that run the actual display. So it's a pretty neat, easy design. It's very, it's intricate, very complicated but it's very simple at the same time it's pretty cool how they do this um, you can see inside there some of the mechanical components um, I'm scared to break this to, to uh, open this apart um, just I don't want to tamper with too much but you guys can see overall just the how it looks okay all right and I'm going to actually reattach the battery so you can see it on Throw the battery back in there. I don't recommend you do this until you have the the um, watch closed, but for the sake of this video and for educational purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how that looks. There you go. All right, so there you go. Uh, once you throw the battery in, you'll get the 12 o'clock zero position, which is the back to the um, um, factory um, zero 12 o'clock and then I would recommend that you do either using a uh, tweezers like this to do an AC reset. You just look at the watch, and it's always there's always a um, on, there's an inscription on there that shows you where the AC is. So here's the AC right there, uh, right there. So you could stick uh, one end in there, and then touch the other end to another metal piece of the watch, and it should do an AC. There you go. Um, it didn't look like it did it because it's still showing 50 seconds. Let me try that again. It shows you to touch the AC to the negative, which is anywhere on this here side of the watch. So stick one in there and stick it to the other side, the AC. Let's see if that did it. Nope, not yet. So it's not doing it. So I'm gonna use this instead. I like to use this anyway. I usually like to use a um, this and then this, just touch it from here to there. That usually helps. See, there you go. There's your AC reset. So that works better. Um, I stuck it in this hole there like this and then use my screwdriver to make good contact um, to do the AC reset. There you guys have it. That's the inside component of the LCD display along with the module and the battery. Um, this is for the chime right there. So if you lose that, your bone won't, your your watch won't chime if every hour, or the alarm won't signal um, unless you have that in there. So make sure that's back in there. Don't, don't tamper with the motor there. That's the actual vibration, like I said. 
let's look at the uh, module we're going to put this back in here so i don't want to um damage it and like scott i know he does probably doesn't watch my videos he hates when i leave this face up because you get debris and dirt in there um so be careful not to let anything inside of there debris dirt dust because uh, it's a pain to get that out all right don't touch the inside of the glass all right this you can clean all day wipe it down windex whatever you want to use but the inside once you seal it in there once you throw the module back in there it's a pain in the butt um here's your buttons themselves uh the buttons are connected with that u-shaped ring so to remove those you pretty much just use this here and flick them out of the position and the bun would literally come out that simple that easy they're a pain to get back in so i'm not going to do that uh, mm -hmm. but if you do choose to remove those that's how you would do that um, same with this there you can see there and i'm actually actually show you guys a closer view of that one second all right so here's a closer look it's like a new shape clasp there that holds the bun together I pretty much just use a, like I said, use a um, something like this, and you want to flick that out carefully out or there like that way, and the button will literally just fall off. So that applies to the um, button in the front, and also the buttons on the side. They come off that easy. Be very careful not to lose that, because you will. Once you lose it, it is difficult to, once you remove it, it is difficult to um, reattach it. So don't do it unless it's necessary to do so. If you have some problems or feedback with the button, if it's that complicated, I would say send it to Casio for service. Um, I wouldn't recommend you tampering with it personally. Okay. Here's the display itself. Right there. There's that piece of sensor or um, I forgot what those are called. There's your mortar, like I said earlier. Casio 3481 module. There's your battery, there's your spring. Okay. That's what connects to your button. So once you press the button, that makes contact in there with the metal piece and operates the watch, gives the watch the command. All right, there you have it. All right, guys, I won't bore you with the um, reinstallation of the module. You guys saw how I took it apart. Just do the opposite of that and you'll have the module back in place after you change your battery. So very simple, like I said, um, not that complicated. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, if you don't have the right tools, I recommend you take it to a professional. Um, I wouldn't take it to any jeweler. Uh, some of them don't work on these watches. They find it too complicated. I don't know why it's not that difficult. Plus they may strip your um, screws or they may um, not do something properly. So if you need to send it to Casio or someone who is a Casio authorized service, um, otherwise do it yourself. It's not that difficult. Get yourself a trusty tool and then you'll be done. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, hit me with it in the comments. If I screw something up, if you're uh, opposed any of the, the instructions, it only helps everyone else as they watch the video and come and looking for answers. So if I did something wrong, educate us, help us. I am never, I'm never offended. I'm always welcome to um, constructive criticism. And we all learn that way. I am not, I don't consider myself a professional. I've been dealing with watches for a very long time, but I'm not a professional. Nevertheless, um, I do know how to navigate around a watch, uh, especially when it comes to changing a battery. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Um, consider subscribing for more content. Until next time, I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. All right? Chicago! Holla at you, boy. Peace!